What are the benefits of Tai Chi? Not just the boring health benefits meant for old people, but what are the self-defense benefits and the spiritual benefits? Can it enable me to break metal and walk on water and meditate to a high level of spirituality? What's up, y'all? My name is Prince, and today I'm answering a question about what the higher level benefits are of practicing Tai Chi besides the boring health benefits meant for old people. So before I start to unpack this question, I just want to say that if you're new here, hey, I'm a Kung Fu nerd trying to live the dream here in Asia. So if you like this kind of thing, be sure to subscribe for new videos about my latest adventures. But OK, so getting back to this question about the benefits of Tai Chi, let's go in order, starting with the self-defense benefits. Now, I'm going to say that there are definitely self-defense benefits from studying Tai Chi if you are willing to invest the time and the energy required to reap the benefits. Now, I imagine that you're pretty young and maybe you enjoy playing video games. So have you ever played a game like a role playing game where you have some characters who are like cool right out of the gate? You can pick them up and basically be awesome at level one. Well, that character is not Tai Chi. Tai Chi is like that character who takes forever to level. Every level is a grind fest and it's like all you want to do is hit level 10 and unlock some new ability. But then you realize, well, OK, I just got that new ability, but I still kind of suck and I'm still really getting destroyed in this game. It's like that all the way to level 50. And then when you hit max level with all the other level 50s, you still feel like you're underperforming next to all of those other classes in the game. Now, this sounds pretty depressing. And most people are going to not deal with this madness. They'll either quit the game altogether or they'll re-roll their tune. Maybe they'll jump on the flavor of the month character or build. And then the word gets out, yo, don't play that Tai Chi class. That character sucks. The, everything sucks about it. It's underperforming. Trust me, I know. I used a fancy calculator to crunch all the numbers and statistics. This is a busted class and the devs should just get rid of this class. It's completely terrible. But what happens is that there's going to be these dedicated players who grind and get the best gear and figure out the best strategies. And those players are going to blow everyone else out of the water. Like, wow, I had no idea that this character could be that good. Look, that's what Tai Chi is. And I'm going to be honest with y'all. Most people aren't going to stick with it long enough to reach that point. And yo, man, that's completely OK. Look, man, not everyone is going to become a master at Tai Chi fighting. And I'll be honest, there are some Tai Chi masters out there who make millions of dollars every year teaching Tai Chi. And they aren't even master Tai Chi fighters, but they do have Tai Chi skill. And this is something that sets Tai Chi and other martial arts that are similar to Tai Chi apart from what a lot of people think about when it comes to martial arts. So I just said that there are Tai Chi masters out there who are not masters when it comes to fighting. Using my video game analogy, this would be the equivalent of a person who reached level 50 on their character and they never jumped into the hardcore raids or the PVP stuff. Maybe they just kept playing the content at their level or running around helping people at lower levels. See, learning Tai Chi as a martial art requires you to develop certain kinds of attributes and skills. You have to develop what some people call the Tai Chi body. Now, think about some other kinds of martial arts where you're required to do certain kinds of things in order to condition your body. I mean, like what kind of boxer would someone be if they never skipped rope or did road work to develop their cardiovascular system? What kind of a Muay Thai fighter would someone be if they never did anything to condition their shins like kicking banana trees? Most people think of Tai Chi as just the form, but the form is actually just a training tool. It's like a choreographed type of shadow boxing. Now, there are certain attributes that you're looking to maintain as you move, and that's why the form is just a training tool. So. I've been calling that particular attribute in other videos, Tai Chi energy. But when I say that term, man, people think I'm talking about magic powers or whatever nonsense that they're bringing with them 
to the conversation. And the proper term is actually Peng, which doesn't really mean anything in Chinese. The closest equivalent is a word Peng Yo, which means embrace friends. Peng is described as feeling a feeling of fullness or like being a balloon. When you have Peng and someone pushes on you, your body will repel them without you having to use a lot of energy or effort to match that incoming force. So when you practice the form, you're actually looking to hold these postures and transition between the postures while maintaining that feeling of Peng or fullness. That's why people do Tai Chi slowly. Now, if someone is learning the forms, but they aren't learning how to develop the attributes, well, I'm gonna be honest, I can't really say that they're learning Tai Chi, not Tai Chi as a martial art at least. Now, there's a lot of people who aren't, and yo man, that's completely okay. Look, everyone has to start somewhere. Now, I've spent a long time talking about what's required to develop real Tai Chi skill, but the rest of your questions, <laughs> they really have short answers. So developing Tai Chi skill and being able to fight are two different conversations. Like I said earlier, there are some big time Tai Chi masters and they just aren't fighters. Just because you have Tai Chi skill doesn't mean that you can fight. Fighting is a skill, just like developing real Tai Chi is a skill. This might not make sense to anyone who hasn't trained in any Chinese internal martial arts, but the majority of your work to developing Tai Chi skill that's going to come from your solo practice. So, I mean, me saying that, is this starting to make sense? Look, in my teacher's school, we say unifying with the body. This is solo practice. Unifying with the partner. This gets into partner practice, starting with partner drills and eventually to free fighting and all out sparring. Now, there's another level that is unifying with your surroundings. This is like crossing into the void or reaching that level of emptiness kind of thing that you have in Buddhism and, and Zen Buddhism and in Taoism. Um, now, I don't know if that's a thing in other martial arts, but it touches on the spiritual questions that you did ask about. So first off, look, let me say this. Tai Chi is not going to give you supernatural abilities or turn you into the avatar and allow you to bend all of the elements and speak with the spirit world. My teacher system is tied closely with Taoism and Zen Buddhism. To grasp the deeper levels of the art, you have to start a serious meditation practice. And we even have a meditation retreat at a Buddhist monastery uh, in St. Louis. Now, in some Tai Chi lineages, the teacher might require you to become a student of their particular school of Taoism or their flavor of Buddhism. And I'm not going to say that there are not spiritual benefits to practicing Tai Chi, because I mean, there's like a Taoist Tai Chi church somewhere in the U.S. It's like you go to church and you do Tai Chi instead of sitting in a pew listening to the sermon. And I can't tell you what goes on because I've never been. But I mean, yo, 12 years ago, I started awaken Kundalini as a result of my Tai Chi practice in the Buddhist meditation that I was doing. Now, what I will say is that Tai Chi, it wasn't really developed for this stuff. You would have to do some other practices and maybe the ability to relax as a result of practicing Tai Chi might help you achieve that other stuff. So look, look, I'm going to be honest with you. Just looking at your questions, you're probably not even watching this video by this point. And I probably not said anything that you were hoping to hear. The real answer is that all those health benefits that you said you don't care about, that's really the most important thing. Less stress, low blood pressure, better balance, better cognitive abilities, better quality of life. For a young person, this might sound boring, but I live in a place with a lot of retirees who would pay a fortune for that kind of thing. I mean, what if you did find some esoteric practice that gave you the ability to break metal, bend the elements, walk on water, catch bullets with your hands and speak with the spirit world. <laughs> I mean, yo, there's a guy in a documentary. Parts of it got uploaded to YouTube and he could do all of those things. Right. I know some of his students and I was hoping to meet a few more of his students over the summer. Well, before the lockdowns from the pandemic canceled all of those travel plans. But this guy I'm talking about, he got old. He got sick. He fell and he hit his head in February and now he's dead. There's a book about this guy and he had a teacher. 
You know what happened to his teacher who was at an even higher level? He got old, he got sick and he died. My advice is to stop chasing after magical feats and wonders and just start living. Look, if you want to practice Tai Chi, just do it as an investment into yourself and your health if you're lucky to live long enough. So that's all I got to say. And I hope this helps. And yo, man, good luck to you on your journey. But remember that becoming the best version of yourself is a process. It's not going to happen overnight. But anyway, hey, for everyone else here, hey, I hope you like this video. I'm kind of getting back to my roots. I'm back in the dojo. Uh, I have a bunch of video footage to edit from at least six temples that we visited in Malaysia, Vietnam, and on our last trip to Bangkok in August. And we're going to visit at least three more temples this weekend up in Chiang Rai. So be on the lookout for those videos. But anyway, hey, that's all I got for this one. So y'all keep on breathing and uh, I'll see you on the next video. Bye. Bye. <laughs>